Hello everyone. This summer I'm working on designing an API for iterative methods in Julia. So first I will give an introduction to iterative methods, then I'll explain the main problem, and finally I will introduce a new feature I want to add to, to these packages. So a linear equation looks like this. A times x equals b, where x and b are vectors, x is unknown, and x for some solvers can be either a matrix or something like a function that can calculate the result of a MATPEC product. So there are just two ways to solve these equations, with direct methods or iterative methods. What is the difference? Direct methods have a fixed number of operations. So yeah, when you call it, you have the result, and that's it. And the backslash operator is implemented with these methods. So iterative methods, in contrast to direct methods, don't have a fixed number of operations. So they, they terminate by a, under a certain criteria, which is usually when the residual norm is under a certain threshold. Here we can see a plot where at each iteration, this method reduces the residual norm. So at some point, it stops when it's good enough. So why use iterative methods? Well, the, the general rule is to use the backlash operator, but sometimes A is really large, and this method can take a lot of memory. So in these cases, we have to use iterative methods. And here we can see that the call is not so obvious as before. You usually have more than two parameters describing the problem. So I have to design an API for three packages existing in Julia. Iterative solvers, Krylov methods, and methods, oh, and Krylov. So here we can see that the, uh, this is a common method about the three packages have CG. And here you can see that the signatures in the three packages are really different. So as a user, when you want to use one of these methods, you want to describe the problem, and for each package, you will have to <coughs> memorize or look up where to put these parameters. And you can see here that also the spelling in some keywords is different and their two types and different. So it's a good idea to have a official common API for the three packages. So the results of the methods. Uh, usually the user just wants two things from this method. The approximate solution and the convergence history, which is uh, some flags and, and an array of the residual norms at each, each, each iteration. Right now, the return type of the solvers is in discussion. So I'll speak here about my current work. I'm making benchmarks for these methods. I'm also trying to create something new in the API. So to introduce this feature, there's a problem. Sometimes this method takes a lot of time to converge. So to know the status of the method, you would have to set verbose to true and see how is the convergence doing at some point. But you, have, you can only do this manually. So what I'm trying to introduce is that you get a placeholder, check if it's, if it's done, do whatever you want, sleep, and query some information. In this case, I put the residual norm, get risk norm, but you can really get whatever you want from the method. So you can put a new condition to finish the method and fetch uh, the partial answer and more information. A special thanks to Yahao, my mentor, and thank you all for listening.